Welcome back. Now we answer questions we receive from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question is, I live in Canada and there are so many evils and depravities I'm noticing in our society. Would you recommend I do Hijra to a Muslim country? Mm, it's a very interesting, interesting question. About 30 years ago, uh, there was uh, more of a call for this. Yeah. Muslims were new to Canada. Uh, well, many Muslims were new to Canada. Of course, Muslims have been here for a long time. But, you know, the, a large contingent of Muslims have arrived mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. here um, within the last few decades. And, uh, you know, at first, this is a concern. Okay, so we've left everything behind. We've come here, whether for a better life or to escape persecution or whatever the case may be. And uh, here we find ourselves, um, you know, our children are growing up and uh, there are difficult circumstances here. How do we bring our children up and maintain the faith that is so dear to us now in our children? Uh, so sensing this sort of difficulty, a lot of Muslims uh, took the simple solution of saying, okay, we're going to make hijra. We going to, hijra means migration. Mm -hmm. We're going to migrate. We're going to go back, go to a, like back to our countries or back, go to another land, mm -hmm. especially a Muslim uh, majority land. And uh, there we will live in peace and harmony with everybody else. And we'll have a chance to practice our faith freely and, uh, you know, indoctrinate our children in our religion as is our right to do as uh, parents. And, but uh, a lot have found that this uh, solution does not work. You go to another part of the world, especially if the children have already uh, achieved uh, some age here, they're already accustomed to life and luxury as it is in Canada, all of the facilities and good systems and so on. And we ourselves become accustomed to mm -hmm. it. So then you go to another land. Of course, we can adjust back. Um, if you ask me personally, I can go back to the, uh, to the way I used to live when I was a child. I'm accustomed to that. Maybe there's even some nostalgia uh, associated with that. You know, I, I can live out the rest of my days like that. But then I cannot expect the same of my children. So mm -hmm. a, a lot of parents found that when they have made that move, within a few years, they have had to come back mm -hmm. um, because uh, their children cannot adjust to the uh, new life in, in a different part of the world, especially if that a part of the world does not have systems as developed as they are here. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there is so much that uh, any adult can, can appreciate uh, that is here in terms of education, health facilities. And uh, freedom. Uh, right? uh, yes, freedom to practice your faith, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, even though there are some restrictions and limitations, no doubt. And, uh, and there is the, the real difficulty of bringing up your children and, and keeping them uh, in, in the same a cultural sort of uh, atmosphere that you were accustomed to when you were a child. You will mm -hmm. see that there, uh, for some people, it's a real culture shock to be here. So the, the question still arises, and the question arose, uh, you know, in a very prominent way about three decades ago. Um, but after that, uh, with the experience of people realizing that, you, you know, you can't have a simple solution like this, uh, because first of all, where do you go? Um, things like the internet is because become per pervasive. Satellite television was, uh, you know, very pervasive in Arab countries uh, for decades now, uh, bringing with it, uh, you know, films from Europe and elsewhere uh, that uh, were quite uh, out of place in, in the Muslim culture. And, and so a lot of people looking at this realize that, so well, there is no such haven uh, in, in the world where you can have all of the good things that you want and at the same time uh, you have, uh, you know, such a sanitized uh, sort of atmosphere uh, in which you can bring up your children as Muslims. So then, There's no perfect place. It feels no like you need place. to weigh the pros and cons yes. in your own mind. And then there is the real difficulty of picking up and then moving to another part of the world. Mm -hmm. You might have to start over, get a new job, get a new yes. home. It's get, not as easy uh, as yeah, it sounds. It's not yeah. so easy. So then we go back to basic principles and we realize that it's actually nothing in our religion that compels us to make that move. Unless, of course, uh, we are uh, in dire circumstances. We can't practice our faith. But if we're allowed to practice our faith where we are, uh, then it becomes, uh, some scholars say, mustahab or uh, desirable to migrate still. Uh, but most of us will say that if we are staying here in Canada and you're free to practice your faith and also, more importantly, to give the message of Islam to others and through your practice and presence here, you might be able to share the message uh, of Islam by your very presence mm -hmm. with, with others, uh, then this too is a boon and should be enjoyed. And uh, in that case, there is no need for people to migrate. 
Dr. Shabir, is there anything in the Quran or the Hadith that mention Hijra? Yes, yes. The, uh, there are a lot of verses that mention Hijra in various ways. For example, people are making Hijra from the Quran. Those who don't want to listen to mm. the Quran, that means they are running away from the, from the Quran. But more to our topic here, uh, the, in, in the fourth chapter of the Quran, the 97th verse, it interestingly says, in the Latina tawafahumul malaikatu dhalimi and fusihim. Uh, as for those uh, whose uh, souls uh, the angels are taking while they were in a situation of wronging their, their souls, uh, kuntum, the angels will say, what were you up to? And uh, they will say, Kunna mustadafina fil ard. We were weak in, 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 in the land. Uh, and then the angels will say to them, Alam takun ardullahi wasi'atan fatuhajiru fiha. Uh, wasn't the land of God wide so that you could have uh, uh, made a hijra, you could have migrated mm -hmm. uh, within it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, interpreted to mean that uh, if people are in a land where they uh, find themselves committing sins, uh, then uh, if there is another land they can migrate to where they wouldn't be committing the sins, then it's better for them to migrate. Maybe it's even imperative for them to migrate to the other land. Uh, but what is meant by Zalimi and Fusihim is not so very clear in this verse, so I, I wouldn't want to press that interpretation too far. Hmm. Moreover, the very next verse says, Il al mustadafina min rijali wal nisa'i wal wildan, la yastati'una hilatam wala sabila, something of this nature, I forget the exact wording here. Uh, it, but it's, there is a clear exception made for the uh, those who are weak among men and women and children uh, who could not find a solution or uh, who could not find a way. Hmm. Uh, so uh, that goes back to what we're saying that, you know, sometimes it's not so easy to get up and, and leave. Um, but again, some aspects of the verse are uh, vague and it's not so clear what really, what would qualify as a person who is really weak, like how weak do you have to be for you to get this exception? Mm -hmm. uh, because the very next verse says that, you know, in the end, know that God is forgiving and he is merciful, mm -hmm. right? He is uh, a fool, he is uh, forgiving. Uh, so so there is uh, the, the caution and at the same time, we should take some caution from the verse um, and, and, and not be satisfied, you know, say, uh, you know, giving an excuse, okay, I'm just weak, but think about it. Uh, but at the same time, we can't be too overburdened with uh, the idea that uh, we are committing sins and there is no way out for us. Um, so, uh, so much for that verse. I think that's the verse that's most pertinent to our present discussion. Now, you so, asked, Dr. Well, do you think an argument could be made that, you know, Islam is easy enough that it could be practiced properly anywhere? Yes, yes, of course. And of course, th there, there are a lot of good things that uh, are available for us in Canada that may not be so available elsewhere. You know, when we talk about giving the message of Islam, uh, here we are, you know, on television, we're speaking a message uh, to the wider populace. Uh, so in uh, some, even Muslim countries, you, you could not uh, be... Uh, in many Muslim countries. <laughs> yes, yes. You would not have the freedom to just simply spread a message. Of course, they would have their reasons that they want to make sure that the message is controlled and it's uh, approved by government authorities and so on. Uh, but uh, in a land where there is a freedom of expression, uh, you know, anyone can speak anything, uh, speak their minds, whether good or bad, right or wrong. And then uh, the, the, the populace as a whole increases in their level of uh, intelligence and, and education and understanding, and they become discerning. They, you know, some people, of course, will choose what is wrong and bad because perhaps that's in their nature, but others who uh, we can hope would be the majority of people who are thinking, they want to be more educated, they want to learn, um, they're open-minded, uh, at least the message will be there for them to uh, decipher for themselves. And so... Once there is this freedom of expression, that, that, that is a good thing. And many Muslims do cherish that. And when they come to a place like this, they realize the value of this. And um, some say we never understood what is Islam until we, we, we came to Canada or some other uh, part of the world where we have these developed uh, systems. So yes, there's a lot of uh, sinful things going on around us, but, but sin is everywhere. You know, there is no perfect society. Mm -hmm. Even in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there were people who were committing adultery. Uh, so, um, you know, the, you, you can't have the perfect 
uh, state anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes when something is unknown, it seems even scarier, right? It seems even more sinful, right? Than if it's something that we know about, we don't even notice the sin, right? So like sometimes we live in a Muslim country, we don't even see that there's all this sin around us. Yes, yes. And of course, that could be a bad thing in a way yes. in that it, uh, you know, we become, um, you know, in, in your, we become, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yes. You don't uh, notice it. Like, for example, a taxi could be cheating you, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you could be, you, you could be screaming at somebody, you could be angry all the time, you know, like different sorts of things come out that you don't really notice, right? You're committing sin, but you're not noticing it because yes. you're used to it. And you, and when you come yes. to Canada and you see different sorts of sin, yeah. Right. It's a different society. Then it becomes kind of alarming to you. Yes. Yes. I see your point better now. I, even if you're in a Muslim country, you could be doing all of these things which are sinful. Yes. And uh, they, Or they, there could be lots of sin around yes. you, but you're just not noticing. Yes. It, right? The type of sin might be different, but yeah. it's a lot of it. And it might be smaller sins, but they're compounded. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, one thing to bear in mind as well is that let's say, you know, you are in a, a, a state uh, uh, where, you know, there's a lot of sin going on around you, but you are maintaining the straight and narrow. Uh, so that's a struggle by itself. And you get reward for that. Whereas if you were in another situation where you were good, but everybody around you is also good, then it's no sweat, right? So you're not making any effort there. You're just going along with the flow. And, and so you are not getting that same reward that you would have gotten if you were in a situation where you had to really struggle to make things right and, and to keep on the straight and narrow. Um, and, and lastly, I mean, you, met, you asked about hadith as well. So let me answer that part. Uh, uh, so there is a hadith that speaks about uh, people migrating along with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he himself, uh, mind you, had to migrate. Mm -hmm. He had to leave Mecca, but he was under severe persecution. There was a threat against his, his very physical life. safety. Yes. Uh, so uh, he migrated and his early followers with him because uh, they themselves, it was not safe for them to live among the, the pagans who wanted to wipe out the religion. But it is mentioned that after he migrated uh, and, and, and after Mecca had been converted to Islam, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that now there is no more uh, migration, but only the Niyyah which uh, means uh, that one should have the intention uh, if, you know, if it so needs be that one would still migrate, but there's no need to migrate anymore mm -hmm. because, of course, Islam was established uh, in those lands. So based on this, some will say that you should still have the niyyah or the intention that you're going to migrate. But uh, I don't want to burden Muslims with this idea that they have to have this niyyah of migrating because if you have this idea that I'm going to migrate, I'm going to migrate, I'm going to migrate, then you're never settled in your mind and, and, and you don't have that uh, momentum to continue to work for good wherever you are because mm -hmm. you always have the excuse in your mind that I'm going to, you know, prepare the good somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so this can be debilitating. But of course, if you are under persecution, if you are not allowed to practice your faith, then you should be looking for a way. That's when you should have the niyyah or the intention uh, to migrate. And uh, you should be making the efforts to make that a reality as soon as possible. But uh, here in Canada, we thank God, uh, we have the full freedom to practice our faith. And uh, there are limitations, of course, some, some things you can't say uh, and so on. But this is for the good of everybody altogether. It, everyone's rights are protected. And, um, you know, you, 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 you enjoy practicing uh, your faith. So, and you can, and, and, and if you don't like something, you can try to change it, right? There's that possibility within a society like Yes, Canada. yes. And, and more on the subject of hijra or migration, there is a hadith that says that uh, the Muslim is one from whose uh, hand uh, and tongue other people are safe. And the one who, and, and the real hijra, this hadith continues to say that the real hijra or the real migration is migrating away from sin. Mm. It's, it's like leaving off the sinful. Another mm -hmm. uh, hadith in the same vein says, that the real hijra is uh, avoiding sins. Hmm. So when you, when you, you know, a hijra doesn't mean you have to take a plane and go to another country. It may mean that you walk on the other side of the road because on one side of the road there are sinful things that you don't want to be part of. Mm -hmm. um, a hijra can be, a migration can be that you were the group of people who are backbiting someone else and you just make an excuse and got up and leave. If you could not have confronted them, uh, with the fact that they're by back backbiting and this is wrong. At least you can leave. Mm -hmm. So the, the hijra can be a very small one, a migration away from something sinful or from a sinful situation, 
uh, to that which is more pleasing to God. We'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. There are people out there who don't interact with Muslims at all in their day-to-day -day lives. They learn everything they know about Muslims from TV or social media. Our Muslim Media Hub will reach these people and transform their lives. Support us at QuranSpeaks.com.